glad to be here. Um, and my point is, um, I have to realize, I have to confess, is preaching to the converted. I want to tell you about the value of a good representation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is uh, using a V1-like representation for an engineering-like purpose. But along the way, I think it highlights and clarifies what are some of the benefits and advantages of this V1-like image representation. So this is joint work with Michael Rubenstein, who's graduating on Monday, uh, Leo Lazo, and my colleague, Fredo Duran. Um, so here's a representation. And like Pietro, I'm following on by showing slides from my thesis. <laughs> um, so this is a, a steerable pyramid representation. The steerability is not a critical aspect here. What's, what's important is it uh, has non-alias subbands and it has quadrature pair uh, filters at each position, orientation, and, uh, and scale. Um, <coughs> so uh, I know I should also say it's a pleasure to talk about uh, multi-scale pyramids with, uh, with Stefan Malat and others in the room. Um, the, this is uh, it's not a, directly a model for V1, but it has many V1-like characteristics. And uh, in particular, it's good for learning what is where and representing what is where. And, and also, with, these, with the being able to modify the phase of these local quadrature pair filters, you can uh, very easily translate things uh, very conveniently within the representation. And from a, sort of a computer vision engineering point of view, uh, when I tell people about these SID features, which have taken over computer vision, um, the, the benefits is that they're nicely specific. They, they talk about what's there by these uh, um, history orientations. And then they're, they allow for slop with the position description of these. You, have, you don't care exactly what orientation is where. You just make a little histogram of, of what collection of orientations is within a certain area. And this, the V1-like representation also does the same thing. And you can um, have that slop in position, if you will, by changing the local phase of these filters. So what I want to do for the rest of this is show you an engineering application of this nice, convenient representation. And we call it ocean magnification. <coughs> OK, here's a catch. I have to confess. Everyone I meet, I tell them, I show them these videos. Like I meet someone on the street, hi, how are you doing? Can I show you these videos? <laughs> <laughs> and so, but the thing uniquely here for this group, it actually fits in, I think, because it, it, it shows the kind of the engineering benefit of this Here's the entire processing for this so-called motion magnification system. We take an input video, break it into a steerable pyramid representation, and then we analyze the local phase changes over time to look at local motion. Um, we maybe band pass filter them to focus our motion microscope on the particular motions that we're interested in. And then we just amplify those phase, excuse me, those phase changes and collapse the pyramid back down to an image. And that's the entire processing. So really it's just, if you will, the secret sauce is take the image, put it into a V1-like representation, make slight modifications, put it back out. And uh, the benefit of this is you get to, to measure and magnify small motions without actually explicitly representing motion. We don't have to resolve the aperture problem. We just look at local phase changes in the filters and amplify them. So uh, here's an example of, now I'm just going to show you some engineering applications of this. Here's a high speed video of a hammer hitting a PVC pipe. We're looking at the pipe end on. And you can see when it comes down, the pipe deforms a little bit. And um, what should the small motions look like? Well, we know from engineering principles that uh, we should see the normal modes, the normal mode deformation, each one oscillating at their own frequency. And uh, using this V1-like representation, we can pull that out and amplify it. So here we're at each different frame. We're temporarily filtering the phase changes to select for a particular uh, normal mode. And then looking at those phase changes and just cranking them up and going back down to the pixel representation. That's all we're doing. So it's a nice engineering tool. You can see, ah, the, the, uh, the high spatial frequency normal mode uh, dies out more quickly. These other lower modes uh, ring for longer. And so now I just want to show you just two or three other examples of what we call uh, the big world of tiny motions. Uh, this is just, I, I really love this project. We get to look around the world and think, well, what might be moving in a small way that we can amplify and reveal what's there, but beyond perception. So let's go to a car. This is Michael's car. There's a high-speed camera. There's a light on it. If 
you just take the raw high-speed video, this is what you see, which is to say, nothing much. You see some beating against the light frequency, but that's it. If instead, you take these image frame by frame, put them into a V1-like representation, measure the local phase changes, amplify it, take it back out, uh, you get motion magnification. Now you can see the different parts of the car moving around. And uh, if you're a mechanical engineer, I think this is very interesting to you. Um, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of unprocessed and processed. Bill, how, how should the parallax of the cable get uh, work? Um, <coughs> you know, I, I, yeah. No, tr it just works. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing any special processing. It just all does the right thing. Um, and you can then go and, so that was um, centering the one octave passband for the phases around the RPM of the car. You can go to one octave above that and see the, the top of this thing flipping at twice the, the fundamental frequency. Um, so then we get to go around the world and saying, well, what might there be small changes that would be fun if we amplify them? Well, the transition to turbulence, I was always told, involves these very small waves that get amplified uh, as the laminar flow becomes turbulent. And I've since learned they're called um, homing shifting waves. <coughs> and in the video, it doesn't show it too clearly, but if you freeze one frame, then you can really see this clearly. So here's the raw video. Here's the motion magnified process. Again, how it relates to this meeting. Uh, take the image, put it into a V1-like representation, crank up the phases, take it back out, and these small waves as they uh, slowly amplify in the laminar streamwise flow toward turbulence. Um, and it's fun to look at people with this. Um, here's Michael, and here he is, uh, if you will, singing. Okay. Um, here's the power spectrum of what we just heard frequency, power. Let's grab the bass band narrowly filter, temporally filter those local phases in our multi-scale V1-like representation and amplify them and show the video. By the way, here's the raw video of him that's playing now, of him singing. And you can't see any motion. And, and when I say that, that's like a foreshadowing in the context of this talk, because now I'm going to show what the motion looks like. Um, OK, so there we filter around the bass band. And, and here now we've revealed what the motions of the throat are as he, as he vocalizes. And I should point out how magical this V1-like representation is because everything kind of does the right thing. It's, it's, it's over multi-scale, multi-orientation. The shadow seems to do the right thing. The, the bristles in the beard seem to do the right thing. And I swear, the only processing we're doing, measuring the phases, band pass filtering, amplifying them, coming back out. So this is the, the benefit of a really nice representation. And then you can, for fun, let's go to the first harmonic, see what that looks like spatially. And I can see it's a little tiny part. It's moving twice the frequency. Um, so that's my point. As I said, I tell everyone this point, but um, I think I'll stop here. I don't know. It's fun to. Sh it's really fun to look at people. There's my daughter. Um, you can do different frequencies of her. She's standing still. That's the input. Let's do the low frequencies. Well, that's breathing, low frequency breathing. With the mid frequencies, well, these little micro expressions. Um, and let's look at the high frequencies. Well, that's not much going on there, but just eye saccades. And then also what's fun in this modern era is to post your code or make it available to everyone else. And so here's what a um, graphic design student at Yale made with our software, Aaron Knutson. So um, these rows are the original, and the other ones are the motion magnified version. And again, the power and beauty of a V1-like representation that makes you know tiny motions. Here we're kind of standing it on its head. We're, we're measuring small motions and amplifying them. You might imagine for recognition, it's important to uh, look at the same orientation independent of uh, precise positioning. And that's what this V1-like representation lets you do. That's all I want.